Welcome. Welcome to Switching Reels. I was going to say that. <laughs> Hello, Trenton. Hi, Connor. How are you? I'm doing great. Welcome to Switching Reels. Yeah, welcome back to Kiki's Delivery Service. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you, uh, at some point, I'm going to post a picture of these, and uh, one of these is not like the others. <laughs> um, if you would like to know about 3D printing, hit me up and I'll make a short about it. Cool. Complaining. Complaining. <laughs> All right, so do we want to catch up on the ones that we... Absolutely. So for those that are just joining us, which hopefully is, I don't know, some people, we are in the middle of a Miyazaki tier list. We're watching all the Miyazaki movies. I have finally printed enough tokens to go and fill out our tier list up to the point that we're at. So Mm -hmm. that's what we're doing now. We have a bunch of them already. Uh, Check our socials for where we put everything else. Oh, it's so bad. (laughs) Uh, So right now we're replacing Kiki's Delivery Service. Which for me is going to go right about here. Which is? That's the middle of S tier. Good man. Yeah. Um, Kiki's is nice, but I think it's bottom of A tier for me. Cool. Uh, We have also gone through Spirited Away. That's what kicked all this off. Yeah, it was. Uh, Unfortunately, we weren't supposed to get to it for two more movies. Exactly. So either way, we're going to place it. I don't remember what I said in the episode. So you have to go off your vibes then. But off of my vibes, I'm going to put it top of A. Oh, just above Castle. Just above Castle in the Sky. Nice. I still prefer Castle in the Sky, but I think Spirited Away is a better movie. I think that... I will have to say that Spirited Away is just barely worse than My Neighbor Totoro, so I'm going to put mine in top of A as well, actually. Ooh, now that you bring that up, I might have to switch these. <laughs> there you go. You just switched. Yeah. My Neighbor Totoro is top of A. And Spirited Away Spirited is, top, Away is bottom, of bottom of S tier. Then what did we watch today, Connor? Today, we watched Porco Rosso, which ah, you had not seen. It's about a red pig. No, no. <laughs> it's about a pig flying red a red flying pig so to speak nothing so you're f- saying is wrong <laughs> but also none of it is right either if anyone would like to know more about me that's the sentence that's, that's, that's the one yeah that's true <laughs> Porco Rosso, I'm going to put top of C. Top of C? Yep. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, I have to see. Okay, yeah, I don't know if it's as good as a S. Oh, I'm going to say top of B. Okay. Mostly because I don't have anything in there. Is it better than Castle in the Sky? Hmm, no, unfortunately it isn't. So that means I have to move Castle in the Sky. And then Yeah, you do. <laughs> Castle in the Sky is now mid B and Porco Rosso mm-hmm. is bottom of B. Um, so Porco Rosso, I think, is one of the weaker Miyazaki films. It's not on our top 250 list. Truth. Um, however, I do think that if a different animation studio had made it, <laughs> it would be like this underground classic that like agree. just had this crazy cult following. Just everyone would be like, have you seen Porco Rosso? Oh, you haven't? Yeah. Oh, here, let me show you. And that's, it's strange because Miyazaki has such a heavy hand sort of influence on this. Mm-hmm. Like, the two things that you can tell that he just adores in everything that he makes, he hammers home on in this. Yes. It's, he loves drawing things, mm-hmm. and he loves... Airplanes. And he loves airplanes. <laughs> he can do both in this one. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure which part is the appeal to him. Is the actual one. But it's definitely aerial transportation is his thing. It is. And yet this feels like a movie that I could easily see being just something that another company makes and Everyone just absolutely loves. No, I totally feel, feel that. It feels like the odd one out in a, in a 
few ways. Yeah. But I can't really put my finger on why. No, I agree. And I think talking more about it over the spoiler wall will be very fun. So yeah. let's go enjoyment. This is still probably a solid... It's a strong 7 to a light 8 for me. Nice. For enjoyment. Technical... I mean, at this point, we are in Miyazaki's, like... This is era. true Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Like, anything after, I'd say, anything after Totoro. Like, you cannot mistake it for anything else. Yeah. So that's strong 9 to a light 10. Yeah. Like, technically, it's just, it's flawless. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose if we're talking, we <laughs> have established that Story structure is a part of technical. Yes, it is. That might bring it down a little bit. But, I mean, so much of this is perfect, I'd have to bring it down no more than a point. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, totally. This is a light nine. <laughs> nice. I would put this one, so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was funny and quirky. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to say eight and a half for me on enjoyment. Okay. Um, and then technical, I feel like the pacing was a little weird and some of the story elements were a little wobbly. Some of the characters kind of just showed up. There were like some Castle of Cagliostro vibes from yeah. some of the elements. Yeah. Um, this is if Cagliostro was good. <laughs> I liked Cagliostro. Here, so. let me help you out there. Uh, that's rude. <laughs> Moves my castle all the way down. Um, so I'd probably give this one an eight for technical. Okay. Yeah, probably say eight. You think the one. you think the flaws with the story were strong enough to knock off two full points? Yeah, and some of the characterization, like I just didn't get what I wanted to out of Marco. Okay, that's fair. I didn't like him as much the first time I watched him. Mm -hmm. The second time, I was like, oh, okay, I know what to expect here. That'll and so happen he, for me too. Yeah, he fits a little better the yeah. second time through because you're like, oh, he he is the only Miyazaki protagonist we follow that is not either a child or yeah. somehow sort of flamboyant. That's true. Um, he More is eccentric. Yeah, he's just he is a grumpy middle-aged pig man that we don't ever get a true explanation of why he's a pig. Exactly, <laughs> or how he stops being a pig. Yeah, <clears throat> the magic system in this is so slight that it is. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. and that's part of the thing that makes me think like. If another studio had made this, the magic would have been completely out of left field and people would have loved that about it. Absolutely. And it would have thrown off all of the audiences that went to see it in theaters. Yep. This would be one of those movies that pops up 10 years later and people like, are oh, like, oh, this is a classic. I love this. <laughs> so this is a kid. It's fantastic. <laughs> exactly. All right. So let's go over the wall then. I think summaries would be yeah. really fun to do for this one. All right. So yeah um like comment subscribe and then unlike uncommon <laughs> unsubscribe time. edit your comments <laughs> <laughs> say it's even more awesome than it was the first time <laughs> but also if you don't think that send us an email or other things when he says send us other things i'm not sure what he means You'll figure it out. But if it's I food, I would be very grateful. I'd, <laughs> I'd love for them to send me a cheeseburger. That's valid. We yeah. had that today. Yeah. That was good. I could have another one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. We're over the wall. All right. Do you want to go first? Sure. Why not? Do it. Um. All right. So... In Italy, apparently, the government and the outlaws are both completely ruled by people in seaplanes. 
that's obviously. what I picked up from this. Um, Pigman <laughs> gets his gets his plane basically rebuilt by a girl, which he has problems with. Yeah, he does. Um, he doesn't have problems with this girl. He has problems with the fact that she is a girl and is rebuilding his plane. Um, shit, man, I don't know. <laughs> this is this is beautiful, Connor. I appreciate. Uh, I, I can I can let you off the hook for a second if you want. On his way over, he gets shot down by an American who says, "Yeah, who?" or something like that. <laughs> It was like yeehaw, but it wasn't quite it. <laughs> he was from Texas as well. He was from Texas, where they say Yahoo. Yahoo! Right? <laughs> you okay, Connor? <laughs> yeehoo! <laughs> yeehaw? No, yeehaw is actually a thing. It's real. That one's a legit saying. But it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say <laughs> I'm I'm done on the spoiler. <laughs> on the, not on the, the spo summary. Summary. Jeez. All right. I'm done on that. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is when people talk <sighs> about bad representation, I think this is like the easiest yeah. way for like people that are Americans to just go, hold on. That's that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not resonate with any part of this. Is this what people think Americans are? <laughs> exactly. Because if so, I have yet to meet an American. And I've lived here my entire life. It's because you need to go down to Texas. That's I've been to Texas. Americans live. I've been to Texas twice. Uh, but have you twice? been to airplanes Three times. in Texas? Have I been to airplanes in Texas? Yes. How do you think I got to Texas? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe they need to be like housed in Texas. It's really like it's actually the airplane that matters. Okay. So it's funny that an airplane, that a seaplane pilot came from Texas. Like they have seas and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think of Texas as. Yeah, me either. I would have loved it if he came from Florida. I also don't think of Italy as <laughs> that <laughs> either. Well, see, but like. Italy had a lot of fascists. Which... Explain the connection <laughs> to the seaplanes, please. <laughs> All that I have is World War II and fascists in it. Italy right. was part of the fascist part, the Axis. There it yeah. is. Uh, and therefore, it had to have some kind of military... It was the fascists and allies, but... Continue. Yes, the fascists <laughs> and allies. Exactly. It was fascists and communists. <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> No, it wasn't, says Connor. <laughs> Only Ooh. one section of the Allies was communist. What was it? Russia. I didn't forget that Russia was... Well, Russia was allies. an allied pal power. That's crazy. They, they're the ones that took uh, Berlin. The U.S. didn't... Yeah. Or, or the Americans didn't uh, didn't take Berlin. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good job, Russian. Um, <clears throat> so... Anyway, uh, <laughs> since they were part of the Axis, they had to have some kind of military. Okay. And therefore, since Italy had a military, and we actually like call out Italy as one of the people of the Axis fairly often, mm -hmm. then they had to have had some kinds of planes, and Italy is only water. So That is not true. It's only <laughs> water. <laughs> it's made out of water and pasta. And <laughs> Because I'm really good at representation as well. <laughs> Well, <laughs> all the Italians are disliking. <laughs> Drive up our engagement. <laughs> Please. If you're from Italy, tell Trenton why he's wrong in the comments. I'd love that. Please. And if you're not from Italy, tell Trenton why, why he's wrong, wrong in, in the, the comments. comments. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so Porco it's, Rosso yeah. is about a flying pig. He flies, though, not of his own ability, but of his own ability in a plane made of mostly wood and an engine. And it's so experimental that no one else but him can fly it because they're like, lol, we just messed up with this airplane, which we learn from 
his uh, dialogue with the girl that he does not like. So <clears throat> he is a bounty hunter. He goes and helps save ships uh, and from planes. Uh, but no one's really worried about the plane pirates. So I don't know why we're doing that anyway. And then whenever he blows up the pirates, he's just nice to them. It's like, hey, keep some of it so that you can go and repay your plane that I just blew up, which feels weird. But uh, then his plane's broken, so he has to go and get it fixed uh, in Milan. And mm-hmm. then he gets it fixed in Milan, uh, takes a girl hostage of her own accord, and then flies back, uh, then has a duel uh, that is the duel of the century and very highly publicized. And then we don't see his face because he's not actually a pig, but he is. But he's turned into a human, we think. Yeah, pretty sure. From everyone's reaction. Yeah. By everyone, I mean the one untrustworthy person in the movie. I feel like there are other untrustworthy people in the movie. Yeah, but not American ones. <laughs> <laughs> This guy was singularly responsible for Watergate. Yeah, it is him. <laughs> That's all. Donald Marcus, whatever his name was. No, the the pig man was Marco Rousseau, not. But also, there's not Don, Marcus. I know, but but what was Donald's last name? I can't remember. Maxim, I don't know, man. All right. Uh, so, what did we like about this movie? You know, weirdly, I don't have a lot of things to pick out that I liked about it. Um, I think this is one of those movies that just has a certain element of charm. Yeah, I was about to say it's like it's very charming. Yeah, that like I can't really put my finger on anything that I was like, that was done expertly. Yeah. I really like the animation in the dog fight. Oh yeah. Me too. Like anytime that there's airplane fighting in this movie, it's done so well. Yeah. Beautifully. So, but it does feel a little scattered as a movie. And I feel like it doesn't feel scattered and it feel needs to have more scattered. Like it follows this one pig guy who like, his one flaw is he doesn't like to respect women, maybe, but you never see that it's happen. His only flaw. He also smokes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. He smokes while he's rocking a baby. Okay. Pretty rude. A couple of things. If if we're if we're setting this in the time period that it was supposed to be Truth. set in. That's common. Yeah, he's not smoking because he's like, I don't care about my health. He's smoking because he's like, but no tobacco is, is tasty. But no one else is smoking. That's not true. Very few people are smoking. Okay. Very few people are smoking in every scene like he is. Uh-huh. But he's just hammering. Again, them. this is this is a thing that at one point we thought had health benefits. Truth. So that's crazy. Like, by the way. <laughs> It's like complaining that he's drinking water too often. Like, <laughs> what the hell is with this guy? He's the only <laughs> one always drinking it's too water. Too hydrated. <laughs> yeah, completely. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, but I would say, like, as far as flaws go, he is the he is the definition of apathetic. Yeah, he is. Um, to everything going on around him. Mm-hmm. And I think that is probably like we're given two flaws for him. Mm -hmm. One of them is that he's a chauvinist and the other is that he's apathetic. Was he show everything? What's a chauvinist, Connor? (laughs) I don't know what a chauvinist is. Oh, a chauvinist. It's, um, it's a, uh, another word for a misogynist or, you know, like a, you know what a misogynist is, it's right? Like a misanthrope <laughs> who hates people. Okay, you know what a misanthrope episode. is, right? That's the one that hates people. Yeah, that's me. Um, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I missed it. <laughs> no, so yeah, there's there's a misanthrope which hates people. Mm-hmm. There's a misandrist who hates men, oh, and there's there a misogynist is. who hates women. Okay, but also, how can you be a misogynist and a womanizer? They say that multiple times that he is. Yes. So, okay. 
it's not necessarily I feel like this is a this is going into a society yeah, podcast yeah. so I'm very excited sorry uh sociology <laughs> podcast has started uh get out if that's not what you wanted yep um, I mean the idea is that he doesn't respect women and that goes hand in hand with being a womanizer because like he doesn't respect women right Let's see vicious yeah. cycle right Chauvinist tends to be a slightly less um, slightly Stabby. less harsh yeah. term, and also it uh, tends to refer to someone who basically, like, they don't necessarily hate women, but they see women as less than men. Yeah. So. Gotcha. And it sounds that, cooler. That's what that's what a a, a porcaroso man is. Ah, because he's a pig. Right. Which is said multiple times. Right. It's said, yeah, it's said a lot of times. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Weirdly, they don't really address that beyond, like, when uh, Theo is uh, rebuilding his plane. Mm -hmm. And he basically goes, yeah, I mean, if you can do the job, then you can do the job. Exactly. Um, At the end. Yeah. Like. Like that's not a huge arc. I feel like, the, but see, and the I don't think that's actually an arc. I think that's the point. I think the thing that Theo says while she's in the sleeping bag is accurate. I think he's being too hard on himself for survivor's guilt. Yeah, I think that's where like this is pointing at is that technically, uh, Marco is making himself a pig, and not actually that he's been cursed. Hmm. That's my take on it, where yeah. um, <clears throat> he feels like that is the case because he survived that just absolutely awful dogfight that everyone else in his squadron perished from. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Um, I still don't feel like he really grows beyond that, um, and like we even see that when he drops Fio in. Uh, gina's lap and basically says like get her out of here yeah um essentially i know what's best for her and it's to not be here exactly um so like i don't know but it goes against some of his self-proclaimed uh i do things because i want to do them and that's it yeah um which he actually does multiple times in the movie like he's not consistent you can tell that he has a heart of a good person um but tries to act as piggish as possible yeah for sure my opinion yeah and i agree with that and i think that's what we see at the end is like him actually caring about Mm -hmm. the other people like even to the point where he enlists uh asshole american yeah to go marcus aurelius yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah mark anthony So Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar <laughs> lead the Italian <laughs> yeah. Air Force on a wild goose chase. Mm-hmm. And that's when he regains his humanity. Yes. Is when he finally says, okay, I'm going to not do just what I want to do here. And I'm actually going to look out for the other people. Yeah. That whether they deserve it or not. Yeah. Essentially. And that like it's just a very Japanese like value to have as well like yeah. that honor and mm-hmm. um desire for collective good so yeah I that was cool i did also like theo's appeal <laughs> to honor with yeah the pirates. i see that was one of the things i did love about this movie was the comedy yeah. like it was a very humorous movie and there were actual like haha times in it yeah. That were enjoyable. It wasn't like Castle of Cagliostro where it's like slightly cringy. It's like they told a joke and it didn't land. And I'm not going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> partially out of spite, partially because it wasn't good. Uh, this one, it was actually funny. Yeah. Like blowing down the barn because the engine's too. Right. Like... And Piccolo's just. Oh, Piccolo is one of your favorite things. Oh, yeah. Piccolo may be. My favorite character in all of the Ghibli universe. That's fantastic. <laughs> He's this old man who like <laughs> fixes Marco's plane all the time. Uh, they know that we're past the spoiler wall. 
Yeah. And <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I like your consistency. I appreciate that. It's one of your more most enduring um, traits. Yours is your cough, which never gets edited out of the podcast. Sometimes it does. <laughs> Whenever it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Out of curiosity, when you say consistency. <laughs> Oh, you were able to remember. Oh, the, we're past this border wall. That was it. Oh, okay. That's all. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, Piccolo was great. I don't, I don't have a lot to say about Porco Rosso, if I'm honest. Like, yeah. it was just very well done, but also kind of C tier. Yeah. yeah. Top of C. This is a C plus. Yeah. Um, the other thing that uh. I did want to touch on as it does feel like this movie kind of has like almost a prologue part one and part two, like everything up to him going to Milan is prologue His prologue him in Milan, getting his plane put back together is part one. And then he gets back to his islands and that's part two. I would agree. That and like, feels I think right. I think that's part of the reason that the story feels a little, I don't know, stilted. Maybe. Yeah. Is the word for it? I think so as well. Like it's very slice of life. Yeah, but not. It feels like it doesn't want to be slice it, of but life. But it doesn't though. want to be slice of life. You're completely correct. Like most slice of life things are like, oh, this is just one night in somebody's life, and it's really cool. Or, and or it's like this is one vacation that somebody took and it's fun to go along with them on their vacation exactly this is like this is the one time you we want got shot down <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> this is like we want to tell a story about a character changing except we actually don't want to do that and we don't want to show the change <sighs> you won't let that go will no, you i won't the end of the movie they don't show that he is a human again. They just drastically imply his height doesn't change. I feel like he's taller whenever he's a human. But the American is like, whoa, look at your face. <laughs> Which he had just beaten him to a pulp. But <laughs> like he was a pig before. So he already knew he'd beaten him to a pulp. <laughs> and we don't even know. Actually, if... that's a farce. What is a farce is the pig meat that they put into hot dogs. Really? Yeah, so it's ground up really, really fine. I didn't know So that. beaten into a pulp. Ah, it's, it's a farce. A That's good. Yeah. I like that. That's good. I like it a lot. Uh, and then we also don't know if he gets to together with whatever her M name is. Gina? Yeah. <laughs> Magina. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's name begins with M in this movie. You, Connor. You like, um <laughs> M Thea. <laughs> like you you do uh mark all of these as explicit, correct? Yeah, okay, I do. cool. <laughs> Cause Magina is not explicit necessarily, but it feels like it should be. <laughs> I really want to make it explicit now. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I hadn't seen it before. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. We don't know if uh, Marco ever actually falls in love with Gina in the way that she wants in her cute little flower tower. I feel like the rest of this just ends too happy for the other option to be likely. Like this is this is ambiguous ending the way that ambiguous endings are supposed to be. You're supposed to say, not who knows what happens. It's here are two possibilities. Now you have to figure out which one it is. I like the top spinning better. <laughs> top spinning but that's is a that's another one. one that's that's correct. No, it's like either he's in the dream or he isn't. You don't over say it. You don't use your voice over. You do okay. something else. Okay, that's fair. <sighs> felt lazy i did not want to have a voiceover telling me how this story ended like how totoro ended better than that (sighs) (laughs) i'm just mad 
Is that why Totoro is at the bottom of your S tier? Yeah, it is. (laughs) I really like Totoro. You just didn't like the ending? Um, It's the highest movie I've rated so far. Yeah. But you put it at the bottom of S tier. (laughs) Because there's other stuff that could go above it. Like Howl's Moving Castle. I've got my spot at the bottom of B (laughs) just for that. (laughs) Top of S. Such a good movie. No, no, no. That's next week's movie. It'll probably be pretty high up there, but I don't know if it'll be about Howl's for me. Howl's has that special place in my heart. Oh, he's moving Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. <laughs> for no other reason than not I need... the top. <laughs> for no other reason than I needed them all to be visible. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I have like some here that you cannot see. So I'll take a That's picture actually of everybody. What, what tipped and, me um, off I was looking oh, at nice. yours and I'm like, Hmm, I can't see that. Where's that going? Trenton doesn't put anything at the top of any tiers. He only puts things at the bottom of tiers. I put them at the top. I have two at the top. Okay. They're just far away. There's this one. That one you put at the top because you refuse to put it any lower. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It has nothing to do with how you... That would be Castle of Cagliostro. It is, yeah. I, I would just not use the F tier. I don't think I'll use the F tier. You can't do that. If one of these tiers doesn't have an item in it, I'm just not going to use the F tier. Everything has to have an item. <laughs> like, seriously, if I, if I were to fill everything else out, it would have to be, like, whatever else went in here stays in here and this comes up, or this would have to come down. Yeah. Like, that's how the tiers work. It's just how they work. I just waste space. Also, that's I'm fine. going to make an arbitrary rule. What? No more than three movies in a single tier. Oh, see, I could have made these tokens bigger then. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Well, I didn't want to reprint them anyway, so. (laughs) (laughs) No more than three in a tier. (laughs) Okay. That's pretty reasonable. Because otherwise, I mean, S tier is going to get real crowded. Yeah, that sounds fun. And A tier is going to get real crowded. I don't know. I think I can even them out. Because, like, Pony is D tier, right? Obviously. <laughs> Excited to watch Ponyo with you. <laughs> I've never watched Ponyo with a war criminal. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. That was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> I was proud of that. Yeah, well executed. <clears throat> All right. Do we have anything else to say about these things? I don't think so. Awesome. Um, yeah, Porco Rosso is a good movie it's that a good you movie. should watch. But um, watch it once is... with full attention, and then just put it on the background. I have moral issues with that. <laughs> <laughs> They're moral issues. They are moral issues. Okay, <laughs> you've opened this can of worms, yes, so I have. we're going to talk through it. Despite the fact that we're we should be done with this. Um, Nothing should be made to be put on in the background. And <laughs> what about ambient music? Okay. And ambient videos. Okay. Ambient videos are weird. And completely different than what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, good. Um, ambient music, yes, it can be put on to be put in the background. But that's because it's not serving the same purpose as music. Movies are stories (laughs) and if a story is going to be told then it should be something that you need to pay attention to otherwise it's either you are not giving the movie the attention it respect the the attention and respect that it deserves or you've chosen a horrible movie and you should watch something else either way this whole second screen bullshit that disney's (laughs) talking about Making the Star Wars shows as second screen content. It's horrible. Sounds like you like that. No. <laughs> as second screen. I haven't also, seen that yet. That's of, really all of, funny. of all of the franchises to, to make use, second screen. You choose Star Wars? You're going to choose Star Wars and Marvel? You don't do that with action movies. Like movies that are designed to be cause action anxiety. stories. <laughs> My goodness. (laughs) All you're doing is making bad shit. (laughs) I'm trying to think of a movie that we've watched. (laughs) That could be a good background movie. 
Because I feel like oh, that's probably to... Twelve Angry Men. <laughs> I like Twelve Angry Men. I know. I'd probably watch that one in the background. <laughs> it's good enough that I would have wanted to watch it for for real the first time, and then like I like having a movie that I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play my board game, and then look up and like. <gasps> I don't necessarily have a problem with that if it's something you've seen before and like you are very familiar with. But like Lord of the Rings. I'll I'll be watching like a TV show with my wife and I will gasp because something happened on screen. And she'll be like, What happened? Because of course <laughs> she's drawing. And I'm like I can't. No, it was on screen for a reason. <laughs> If they wanted it to be spoken, it would have been spoken. <laughs> Do uh, ever rewind for her. I'm not doing that for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Pay attention. <laughs> I may or may not be passionate about stories. Nah, I don't think you are. <sighs> so we're putting a book on in the background. Um... Again, the reason I don't like audiobooks very much is because I tend to tune them out. <laughs> Wait, and I don't you want to tune them out. Exactly. Um, which is why I read books physically. <laughs> yeah. Or if someone's got a really interesting voice, that can work. Yeah. But yeah, typically just when I'm driving because I'm not paying attention to the road in front of me. <laughs> As you shouldn't be. <laughs> um, I'm kind of zoning out and just making sure that nothing comes speeding too, yeah, towards too me. fast. <laughs> speeding toward me. <laughs> nice. So, all right. Yeah. Good Parker Rosso discussion. Agreed. I think. Anything else? Our podcast today was as scattered as the movie was. <laughs> yeah, it was. If you like it, let us know. <laughs> if you don't like it, let us know. Keep your nasty comments to yourself. It's okay. You don't read the comments. That's true. <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Good. All right. How do we end this? <laughs>